Hello, peoples of the internet, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hi, what's up? I'm Marcus, if you're new, and I am a few months male trans guy here to spread some knowledge to the peoples of the internet. So, yeah. But today's video, we're talking about binding and everything that has to do with that. So, first things first, what on earth is binding? Well, binding is what trans guys or masculine presenting people do to make their chest appear flat. It's usually things, you know, like a sign female at birth people do, obviously. So, yeah. Um, first things first. Um, there are many different ways to bind. Well, three main ones I'm talking about today, but there are probably more ways that I'm not, that I don't know. I'm talking about the three main ones that I know the most about and I've seen done a lot. Um, first, we have normal chest binders, like the ones I wear. It's kind of something that's like this. Um, there's also trans tape, which I'll talk a little bit more about and explain that. And there's also the more alternative methods that are normally used by people who cannot afford binders for whatever reason or people that are closeted and want to bind in some sort of type of way. And that is the sports bra method. So first up, I'm going to talk about the uh, one that most trans guys use, which is the chest binders, which is the one I use. Um, so pretty much what that looks like is kind of this thing right here. Let me just show you guys. Um, the binder I'm currently wearing is a um, GC2B half cut nude, like in the lightest shade. Some quite pale it's a half cut um as you can see binder um it's half cut cuts off about here you know binds pretty well i mean um with the way binders work i've had this one for a while so i've worn it a lot it's been stretched out it doesn't bind as well as when i first got it but it still binds very very well you know it's no complaints here but yeah so this is me in my binder see you know yeah i also have other ones i have um, another, this is like the half cut, kind of what it looks like, not on my person. It's a half cut, same exact thing. I have two of these. Um, and then we have, I have a half cut, uh, black one, this size is a medium. Um, this is a medium. This one and the other new one are smalls. It's a medium, it's black, also half cut. I've worn this one a lot, as you can see. Cool. And then I have a full length one, which is also black. You can see it's full length. I haven't worn this one as much as the others. But if you guys see me looking here, that's because if you see me like looking this way, I'm looking at the viewfinder, make sure we're in focus. But yeah, the half cut one, I wore a lot more around the time I first got it, which was about six months ago. I've been buying about since April. Um, yes, I wore that more as like a tank top around the house or like I went out, I went out in it sometimes. But I kind of stopped wearing it as often because it's just really annoying to put on and take off. So yeah, it's kind of convenient. So, next up, we're going to be talking a little about trans tape. And what trans tape is, I'll put a picture of it somewhere on the screen. I also have a link to, like, a more in-depth description of these things in the description. Um, yeah, what trans tape kind of does is it, you kind of put, it's like a roll of tape, kind of like how ace bandages, like when you, like, hurt yourself, you need to keep it stiff, like the ace thing. Don't buy with ace bandage. I'm so serious. Do not do that. Or belt or duct tape. Do not do that. It's very unsafe. You can rip off your nipple. You can hurt yourself. You can hurt yourself pretty bad. So please do not do that. But what trans can kind of does is you will apply some type of cotton or some protection thing. Um, you put it on your nipple area, wherever that may be, and you place the trans tape on top of that, and you kind of pull. And like what I've seen done is they they'll have like a little cloth thing for the nipple to put that on there. Then stick the trans tape on top. And then take it and pull and stretch to like about here, which will like if you push down and then pull. So what that does is like it flattens it and then also pulls across so you appear flat. But the only difference is it's not as constricting as a binder would be, like this, and you won't have these there. You know, it just it looks a lot more natural as you can say. So yeah, that's kind of what that does, like the benefit to that. And then the alternative method, which not like which is usually used by people who can't afford binders for whatever reason or like closeted trans guys or closeted people that want to feel as comfortable as possible but they can't really get a binder for whatever reason. Um, that is the sports bra method. Now there's two ways I've seen this done I'm talking about both and if you guys want like a visual representation or like a more really in-depth thing about it there'll be links to all this stuff in the description. Definitely check the description of this video there's a lot of links in there to many different things to help you guys out. But yeah, so what the sports bra method is, is one way is you take a sports bra, regular sports bra, but you 
turn it backwards so where like the back of it is in the front, you have it on your front, but you'd make that inside out and put that across your chest. And what that would do, it will bind your chest. Um, it probably doesn't sound the most comfortable. I've never done it, but it doesn't sound the most comfortable. Um, and I don't know how safe it is, but you know, definitely we'll look into that. And you guys should look, that, look into that as well if you do plan on doing that. Um, and the other way to the sports bra method works is by layering sports bras. I've seen that people will layer sports bras like one or two, I mean two or three, to like, you know, make the uh, look of it being flat. You know, I don't know how comfortable, like I said, this doesn't sound the most comfortable, but you know, in our position, you get desperate. You know, I thought about doing that, but I was kind of scared too back then just in, just because of questioning of people. Why, why is your chest flat? You know, like that whole thing. So yeah, that's why I never did that. But if you do plan on doing that, please do it safely and do your research on it. I'll be doing my research on it as well put some links in the description to help you guys out so you guys can stay safe when binding. Yes, I understand that having things on our chest suck and you want them to be covered and gone, but you gotta do it safely. Don't you guys hurt yourselves? Safe binding, please. I truly do believe in safe binding. Also, if you're going to buy, you know, your chest binders like these, like what I wear, please buy your correct size. If you are a small, if you're a smaller chest, buy a small. If you're a medium, buy a medium. Do not go smaller because, you know, you think, because you think it's gonna bind better. Yeah, like that. Please don't, because you're gonna hurt yourself. Because the regular binders that, like, in my normal size, if you wear it for a long time, it's gonna hurt. They hurt, especially in the beginning. You get pain because your body's used to like that whole, like, that feeling of like everything being pushed together and scrunched down. It's weird. If you get a size too small, it's, you're gonna really hurt yourself. I do not want that. And we all know that you gotta wear your binder for eight to ten hours. But does anybody do that? No, not really. At least they do, or they do it for a few months and then give up. I will fully admit that I do not bind that safely. I could definitely bind a lot safer. You know, I've take, took naps in my binder, don't sleep in a binder. I have worn my binder for way longer than 10 hours. Don't do that either. And I have faced the consequences of that. So learn from me, bind safely. I'm trying to get better. My girlfriend's not too happy with me about that. Um, you know, I've seen the effects of unsafe binding. I have a video of it. If I decide to put that in, sorry, mom. You know, probably put it around here. Um, my, if you see that, I'm sorry. And if I do put this in and I cut this out, what this is, is I was wearing um, this one, which is my tightest binder. I, I did say this is a medium, but it got washed. I mean, it got dried. You're not supposed to dry your binders. I put them in the dryer, supposed to air dry them. But this one mistakenly at one point got put in the dryer. So it was a little tighter around my ribs. And I wore that one for a long time. And it created this kind of indent on me, which does not feel very nice. We don't talk about that. Sorry, mom, if I put that in. Don't yell at me. Love you. Um, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, that leads us into my experience with binding. I have been binding for six months now, a little over six months. I got my first binder on April 1st of this year. Um, been binding ever since. Um, now, you're supposed to take a day off of binding. I do not do that. I bind seven days a week. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to get to take at least one day off of you know from binding but i do not do that so i definitely think you should do it as well because yes i will i do get pain sometimes here and there and like my rib area once again sorry mom but it's for educational purposes i have to say this um but yeah yeah you know i've definitely experienced like the consequences of long-term binding and binding every day and this that and the other you know um it's not worth it honestly i know that i'm screwing myself up but I don't know, like, just learn from me. Like, if you don't, you don't want it, it's not fun. You know, definitely take the days, up, take that one day off of binding, definitely. You know, don't wear your binder for longer than 10 hours. Like, 10 hours max, guys. Like, max 10 hours, and I mean that. Max 10 hours, please do not wear your binder for longer. It will hurt. Trust me, it will hurt. Yeah, um, but yeah. So, let's go into a little bit of the do's and don'ts of binding. Um, I have this like uh, this chart here that I found online. The website to this will also be in the description below. Throw up this chart somewhere. Um, let me actually get that chart myself. Okay, so focus, please, maybe a little bit. Okay, I have the chart here with me in my laptop. So if you look at the downs, this is see laptop, cool. Um, so please, so we're gonna start with the do's. Do remove your binder and take a break every few hours. Like I said take off your binder, take a break here and there. I do not do the whole taking my binder after a few hours because, well, I go to school five days a week and I go out on Saturdays most of the time. 
so I'm constantly out and I can't really be taking breaks. But if you don't do anything or if you're ever home like all day, don't wear a binder. And if you do, take it off after a little bit, you know, give yourself a break. I do thoroughly believe in doing that, even though I don't do it myself. I believe in doing that. I believe that's a really good option. Don't wear your binder for more than eight hours. Um, when I got my binders from GC2B, um, for instance, that's and GC2B is a binder brand that is like the number one binder brand. Like every trans guy recommends it. It's like the top one. It's very popular, very good. All my binders are from there. You get a little card with it and it says eight to 10 hours. Um, this one says eight on the website, but 10 hours is what they said. So, you know, take, you know, like just max 10 hours. You know, if, you, if eight hours is great, but if you want to pull it a little bit more, 10 hours max, no over that, please. Um, do set aside one day per week without your binder. Like I said, one day a week, don't wear a binder. It will do you good. Don't sleep in your binder. I'm gonna talk about this. Do not sleep in your binder. You will wake up in so much pain. I have accidentally like fallen asleep like at night wearing a binder, but I've gotten up. I got up and took it off. But like I don't know how long I was sleep for, and I woke up in a lot of pain. Yeah, don't sleep in your binder. That is that hurts, guys. It hurts. Um, do regularly wash and air dry your binder. Binder. Um, yes, wash your binder frequently. You know, you wear that thing a lot. You wear it as you like me. You wear it all day. You sweat in it. You, do a lot of stuff in it, definitely wash it, and do not dry it. If you dry it, it will shrink, and that thing does not need to be any smaller or tighter than it already is, that's very bad. Like I said, the one that I dry, I don't wear it for long. Like if you do, and if it does accidentally get dried, because you know, things happen, I get it, we're human, we, we make mistakes. If it gets dried, just don't wear it that long. And if you do wear it, wear it in case of emergencies, you know, and, just don't wear it for as long. And if you wear it for like a school day, like that's eight hours, boom, come home, take it off. You know, that whole thing. Yeah, don't put your binder in the dryer. It may shrink. And do see your doctor if you notice any like back pain or rib pain, anything like that. Um, also, not good if you notice any pain. Yes, I have as well, but I know what it's from. And it's not that severe to the point where it's like excruciating and it gets bearable. You know, it's not like doctor necessary for me, as though I believe. Yeah, um, and do not use ace bandages, do not use duct tape, do not use belts, do not use that to bind. You can hurt yourself, rip off your nipple, don't want that. Same thing with uh, trans tape. If you are going to use trans tape, use a little piece of cotton. It could be like some felt or like a cotton ball or whatever. Place it on your nipple and then tape it because you don't want to lose a nipple, guys. Top surgery, you know, you want your nipples, dude. Like, I swear you want your nipples, man. Nipples are good. Don't lose a nipple, especially don't rip one off. Uh, definitely go check out the description. I'm gonna have the links to GC2B up in there so you guys can go look at binders there. Um, those range for about 30 to 40 dollars, depending. Um, there's also gonna be links to more in-depth explanations and videos to about like sports bra method, um, trans tape, and uh, the kind of binders I wear. So go check out the description. There'll be a lot of helpful links in there. You know, definitely bind safely. Yet again, please bind safely, guys. If you're gonna bind, do it safely. Follow the rules. You know, be cautious and everything. Be safe, guys. You know, love you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like it if you liked it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. You know, we're at 42 subscribers, 43 subscribers. You know, it's very big progress. Last video we were at about 30-ish. So you know, definitely going up, guys. So thank you guys for that and welcome everyone who is new. Happy to have you here. You know, yeah. Hope you guys have a great day, great night, great evening, whatever time it is for you. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.